I've walked you through a daily range, mentioned the characteristics. They're very generic. Do you think about price like that? If you haven't been thinking about price like that, now you should. Because in my mind, the inner musings of the ICT, when I'm watching the daily range form, I have all these thought processes in my mind. And I'm anticipating certain things based on the logic I showed you and talked about here. I am not surprised. I am not taken back in a gasp when the market does something at any one of these times of the day. I'm expecting all this stuff. But anticipating it and entering the trade is two different things. In the beginning, you need to just sit still and watch. And you desensitize yourself. You remove all the doubt, all the fear, all the trepidation about you being able to do this. Oh, it's rigged. It's fixed. It's fake. He only shows you the winning trades. He this and that and that thing. You have all these excuses that you have to sort out. All that's put to bed when you start seeing it happen over and over and over again. When you start seeing it live, pan out to script. Whose script? Mine. Not Elliot's. Not Sam Sidon's. Not Wyckoff. Mine. This market is absolutely predictable. But there's times when the market's going to be a little fickle. This is simply going to give you the setups that you like to see. New York session. Optimal trade entries. London session. Turtle soups that shift into 2022 model or optimal trade entry. Breakers really do well in London. Reversal market profiles in New York session. Once the targets on the weekly and or daily chart is met and reached, chances are we have an intermediate term high or low, and then a breaker can be forming there as well. You see how you can anticipate all this stuff? But you have to see these things. You can probably hear my son going crazy. He's in a tournament on his computer here playing a PC game. <laughs> it gets nuts. But uh, all of these individual times of the day, the silver bullets are always continuation. They're, they're, they're continuations of whatever is in motion at the time. If you can't determine what is in motion, don't take the silver bullet. How about that? How's the logic for that? It's simple, isn't it? When in doubt, stay out. So we've walked through how to go into the time of day. What, what time frame of the day, you know, all these different sessions. When are you going to set up shop? What's it going to be for you? Are you going to be a London boy? Are you going to be a New York uh, shirt that trades? Are you going to be a lunch hour hero? Or are you going to be a silver bullet shooter? A gunslinger in the morning? Or a gunslinger in the afternoon? Or are you going to be a giant come lately and trade the last hour trading? There is no advantage over any of them. They're all equally potentially profitable. And they all have their advantages within and of themselves. Because they're time-based and specific in character. Each one has their own individual character. So you have to trust that this is enough. If you just do one of these sessions and make it your model, you will control fear of missing out. You won't have it. Because you're limiting your attention, your focus to one specific time of the day. And it meets and allows you to work within your life. See, you're trying to probably do something that your business, that your school schedule, or your family, your spouse, your children, something's preventing you to be in the New York session. You want to do what I'm doing. You want to be able to do what the community's doing, but you can't do it. And you're frustrated. Like, man, what the hell? I wish this guy would talk about something else besides this time of day. I've just did today. Where are you in that? Because it checks somebody's box off everywhere. Every one of these time periods can be traded. I don't care where you live. I don't care where you live, what you're doing. You're going to have to make a sacrifice. You're going to have to, folks. If you want this bad enough, you're going to sacrifice. And here's the thing. If you don't backtest it and see that there is absolute validity to what I'm teaching and showing you, forget the people that are making money with it. Forget all that. Okay. These companies could be fake. They could be paying. They could probably paid actors by ICT. They're probably talking about money that doesn't even exist. This, this is make that argument. It's not true, but let's just say that for instance. Okay, you looking at the old data 
back testing and seeing it and then thinking, okay, I understand the concept and I'm going to go forward and now watch it going forward within one of these time windows of the day. Is it a lot of time that you're investing for that particular trading day? No, no, it's not. That's an advantage. You're not sitting there like a zombie staring into the abyss of these candlesticks and just not knowing anything, which is very frustrating and it's draining. These markets are vampires. If you hook up an IV tube to you and let it take all your blood, it will. It will suck you dry all the way to the marrow. So limit the exposure to it. If you can't find your setup in these times of the day, or if you lose, stop. You know it's never going to happen? You're never going to blow your account. You're never going to have major drawdown if you control your risk and keep it realistic and use real stops. You won't be fear of missing anything. You'll have a complete business model. And you won't have to work a part-time job schedule with it. It's very small in terms of your time and attention is required. But you have to put a lot of time in the beginning when you're back testing and looking at old moves, studying it. Do these things exist? Or is he talking out his ass again? I'm telling you, go back and look at the charts. You're going to see it. And it repeats all the time. But see, what happens is, is you get caught up in all the new things I'm teaching, all the new content, all the new concepts. Give me a new trick, ICT. Teach me another magic trick. Oh, how about just using what I already taught right now? I've made it very simple. I talked about very specific times of the day. That is rule-based because the algorithm is going to operate in these hours a very specific manner. And it's going to deliver a price. Buying and selling pressure is not going to be a factor. The algorithm will price in all of these setups. That's why it sounds like arrogance. That's why people say, I don't like his attitude. He's too arrogant. He's too cocky. That's because I know my shit. I know the market. Like the back of my hand, I know it. I know I'm not going to be surprised Monday. I'm not going to be surprised on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It doesn't mean I'm taking a trade. It just means I know what I'm looking for. And if it meets what I'm expecting... And it all lines up and I feel like it's something I want to do. Done. You'll hear about it. And I'll ask you, do you want to see a dose? And you'll watch me go in there like I've already seen it before. I have. But nonetheless, you'll get that same skill set. But you're pushing it further in the future by trying to always change. Always transition into something else. That 2022 model that I gave on YouTube last year man that thing is a strong model and for the folks to say can you just get off these one minute charts I see get off these intraday charts I need something on a higher time frame I want to be able to swing trade okay go to a four hour chart the same thing that you use or I've been using on a one to five minute chart with that 2022 model if you put it on a four hour chart that will allow you to swing trade you got to wait for it. it takes a long time it takes forever for the setups to pan out to your objectives, but guess what? Working class hero, that's your model. Did you have to change anything? Just the time frame. But all the logic is still there. You're not going to get a lot of trades. That's the sacrifice that you're going to have to make as a, a higher time frame swing trader. You're not getting a swing trade as many times as you can get a day trade or a scalp. I can find dozens of trades intraday. My students can find dozens of trades intraday. But we can't force dozens of swing trades. They, they don't form that frequent. It can't because the higher time frames are what they are. So if you like frequency and to be able to have velocity in your money, you use short-term trade intraday. You have no overnight risk, no gap risk. What's gap risk? The difference between where we close at 5 p.m. and where we open at 6 p.m where we close on Friday and where we open on Sunday. That's gap risk. In years before, you know, I, I I didn't mind holding over the weekend. I didn't mind holding overnight. I don't do that anymore. I will never do that in the future. I don't trust what can happen. They can do some crazy nonsensical thing and all kinds of manual intervention comes in because of 
something happening in, in the world where you know, one country doesn't like what another country is doing. And an event that may or may not be foreseeable occurs and it, you're wiped out. A black swan event that we're in we're in those conditions still and it's getting more and more likely all these factors make trading much harder i want all of you to do well because i know what's coming i've known it and i knew they've been following me for a long time they have known that i've been saying this was, was going to come even when we were in the good times i told you it was coming and it feels like oh maybe it's getting better it ain't getting better they're just changing the way it looks. Because they have a lot more progress to make over the next 18 months. And you got to prepare yourself. Make yourself ready. Make your house ready. Non-perishable foods. A way for you to you know grow your own food. It may not be feasible. But you got to do whatever you can, right? It's all lies. All this stuff. Everything you're told is a lie. Everything about the market you've been learning from all these books and writers and teachers and things that they talk about on, on the news. It's all lies. You're being lied to. You're being manipulated. You're being controlled by misinformation. And having a lot of money in a world that's changing to this degree might not be enough. And that's my concern. I'm not sleepless at nighttime over it. My faith isn't in money. I've been poor before and I don't care. I had a fish, I had a cook, I had to do all those types of things. But I'm talking about things that you might not be aware of because when it starts happening, it might scare you. It might make you stressed out and scared or stressful mindsets can't trade efficiently. You'll be consumed with this in terms of anxiety. So if you're told about it in advance and you can make your house ready as best you can, I'm hoping, and this is the only reason why I'm talking about it, I'm not trying to scare anybody. It's not meant to be fear-mongering. It's meant for you to just prepare for it. However you feel that you can and how you can, that's all I'm in trying to inspire in you. I'm not telling you to resist or go riot at your presidential palace or White House or whatever, because that stuff isn't going to do anything. That That's not going to do nothing. It's going to get you in trouble. And that, that's what you want to avoid. Rising up or insurrections and things. That's what they want. They want that to happen. They want that very thing to happen because that's going to allow them to usher in more controls. Control measures with finances and civil control mechanisms. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can only go outside at this time. Down in Baltimore, I don't live in Baltimore. I've never lived in Baltimore. But locally, they have a curfew. If you're this age, you can't be out past this time. If you're this age, you got to be home by this time. Unless you're going to work. Really? You are you going to be comfortable with that? You can go outside at this time, but not this time. <laughs> it's like we're in a weird science fiction movie that keeps getting worse. So losing control of yourself emotionally over it, either by fear about it right now or getting angry when it happens, you have to find a way to stay in control of yourself and shut your mouth. Not because you're licking the boots, but because why make a target of yourself? Especially if you have kids, if you have children, if you have a family that's depending on you. I don't want to have any more than what's already going to come. And I, I don't hold back what I think. I say what I think, and I, it, it, it is what it is. So if I remain on social media, all I'm going to do is put a target on myself. And just look around, see what they're doing with people. Not recognizing that your world slowly becomes smaller and smaller. And it's about to become even smaller. Big population reduction, that's their plan. So, anyway, it probably doesn't feel like a, a, a good way to end a Twitter space. <laughs> I'm telling you these things. That way you can get you and your household prepared the best way you can. And let it also be an inspiration for you to learn how to do this. Treat it like a business because it's going to get harder for everyone. 
I have a lot of money and having a lot of money is not going to exempt me from what is coming. It just makes it much more important that I don't talk about the things that I talk about in public forums like this. I'll be deplatformed and there it is. So if my YouTube channel goes down or they take the Twitter account down or if I put a uh, SoundCloud out on that SoundCloud account and it talks about these things like this and they take it down, then you know what I've said was absolutely true and there it is. I won't come up come back up with another platform to try to be a backup system. I'll just take that as, okay, <laughs> I don't need any more reminder. It's, it is what it is. I've already said all these things anyway, but I'm just trying to be a voice of reason to keep you encouraged to, to keep doing what you're doing. That's all. I mean, it's easy to feel complacent about going to work every day and thinking that that's, that's the American dream. You're getting your bills paid. You're just eking through life and you can make your mortgage or your rent payment. And this is like a distraction to all that stuff listen to me or you know pretending that you're gonna eventually be profitable in trading and that's not what i want you to do i want you to learn how to do this as a, a means of secondary or primary income to help fortify you know and put in place the things that you would like to have to make existence comfortable and more bearable because times are going to be harder you know i have a heart you know i i, I don't want any of you going through anything unpleasant and I'm sharing my life and my time and my resources and my experience with you in hopes that you'll be able to live a better life and present a better life to your children. That to me is motivation why I do it. And I'm talking to you in a medium that I don't make any money with. And I do that because I want you to trust what I'm saying is only inspired because I want to do well with you and for you so that way you can do what you're not really equipped to do otherwise and maybe if i'm wrong hopefully i am none of these things happen and you live a better life and your children live a better life because you pass on this information to them that to me is a rewarding life that to me is a purpose-driven life that's a that gives me a, a, a sense of accomplishment Better than making money in the marketplace, okay? Better than being recognized in the industry as this guy or that guy. I want to be remembered as this this person talking to you. The person that is investing his time and resources and time teaching you how to do things to be a better person, to equip yourself and your family, to not go through as much discomfort as the average person will in the coming years. Because it's going to get stupid. Like, it's going to get really stupid and... I, I don't have answers for all of it. Like it, I've, I've racked my brain for years, you know, all through the COVID crap and stuff. Like I was trying to come up with, you know, ways to navigate all of it and, and what would be an exemption for me to do this or do that. And, you know, I've contemplated, uh, you know, moving to other countries, you know, I, I wanted to go to Ireland and then Ireland started acting up and doing some silly stuff. <laughs> I was like, I ain't going there. So it, it's, it, it came painfully obvious that it's not going to be a place where I can go. There's no place that you're going to be able to go that is exempt from it. Even if the dollar were to go up at contract value higher, the buying purchasing power of it won't remain the same. And it doesn't make sense for someone that's new. There's like, it doesn't make sense. Um, just look at what you're doing right now. When you go to a store, when you, when you buy groceries, um, it, it costs a lot of money. You know, what I used to purchase for me and my family, uh, we would, I, when I purchase food, I, I, I purchase one month's worth of normal consumption, and then I replenish my food stores in my pantry. So long-term pantry, and in the average every day, like milk and eggs and stuff like that, my wife will grab that on a week-by-week -week basis. But your bill probably is you know, much more than it has been in the past, too. But it, it costs me about twelve to $1,300 to buy the food that we put in for a full month. 